Greeting from Yashoda Hospital. Today we are presenting a case of laparoscopic myomectomy for multiple cervical fibroids. This young lady of 35 years of age was suffering from menorrhagia due to multiple cervical fibroids. Her MRI was showing twin fibroids at the cervix arising from its anterior lip, each measuring around 5 to 7 cm. The surgery typically began with mobilization of sigmoid colon followed by uterine artery temporary ligation at its origin. By doing this, we reduce the blood supply to the uterus and the fibroid. The mean arterial pressure in the uterine vasculature is reduced and it helps in reducing blood loss. However, according to us, this step is not completely mandatory. With good surgical skills, maintaining proper planes and judicious use of diluted vasopressin are more than enough to reduce intraoperative bleeding. Now you can see the cervical fibroids are causing bulge both anteriorly and posteriorly at the level of cervical region. The normal size uterus can be seen sitting over the fibroids. The next step is to open the UV fold of peritoneum and separate the bladder from underlying cervix. This step is very important to safeguard the bladder during myomectomy. One has to take proper precautions not to open vessels running in that area and this is achieved by dissection in a proper plane. Once UV fold is incised adequately and bladder is mobilized cordially, we move on to the next step of injection of diluted vasopressin at the junction of fibroid and normal stomach tissue. The dilution here used is 1 ampule of vasopressin in 200 ml of normal saline. We infiltrated around 100 ml of diluted vasopressin and proceeded for the next important step of myomectomy incision over the cervix. Now this incision should be always vertical midline and not transverse. If we take a transverse incision and if it extends either deliberately or accidentally, it may damage the ureters. If it is not damaging the ureters, there are chances that ureter may come in the, our ligatures during suturing of the myoma defect. After an adequate incision, myomas are being unucleated by sharp and blunt dissection. You can see the use of myoma spiral at multiple sites facilitate this procedure quite well. As a rule, we avoid use of any energy source for this enucleation. You can notice upper myoma has been completely enucleated and lower myoma is now under our vision. With the help of myoma spiral, this myoma is also enucleated using cold scissors. One can notice exposure of cervical canal at this stage. Once both fibroids are enucleated, next step is suturing of the defect. In this case, we have used V-lock sutures. One can use Vicryl sutures also and it's a personal choice. V-lock sutures are better for suturing of myoma bed as they are self-anchoring, no knotting is required, which reduces surgical time significantly. The barbs provide consistent tension along the suture line, ensuring that the wound edges are approximated evenly. This helps in achieving better wound healing and reduced scarring. The self-anchoring features allows us to have better control over tissue approximation leading to more precise and secure closure. V-lock sutures cause less tissue trauma since there is no need for knots which can sometimes cause irritation and additional tissue damage. This can contribute to enhanced healing and reduced post-operative pain. Consistent tension along the suture line can decrease likelihood of tissue necrosis, tissue dehiscence and hematoma formation. 
the reduction in operative time and potentially lower complication rates are the key factors which balance the additional cost one can see and notice the suturing of myoma bed is beautifully done by vlock sutures in this case the defect was small so single layer suturing was done once this is done hemostasis is confirmed uterine artery ligatures are removed and ns wash is given uv fold of peritoneum is sutured with vicryl number 1 continuous running sutures peritonization of uv fold is an important step it prevents post operative adhesions between cervix and anterior abdominal wall the last step of the surgery is tissue retrieval which is done by morcellation here we have done naked morcellation however contained morcellation is a better option contained morcellation avoids spillage of macro and micro particles of fibroids and reduces chances of parasitic fibroids in future after finishing morcellation and removing entire tissue ns wash was given hemostasis was reconfirmed and the morcellator port was closed under vision this completes the procedure thank you for watching this video comments and suggestions are welcome for constant improvements and refinements of surgical technique